If you want a really quick and simple sewing project, then you can't go wrong with this little wristlet. Um, a circular pouch with a zip down the centre, fully lined on the inside as well, but it's so quick and easy. And you can use different fabrics. I've used um, home decor fabrics for this one, which are backed with a fusible stabiliser. For this one, I've, oops, I've used a lighter weight of fabric, so I've put some fusible wadding behind there, so it's really nice and padded and sumptuous. And I've just popped a little bow on the top. That would look nice in a smaller size, just hanging on the Christmas tree. Um, or you could try something a little different, like this one, where I've put the zip slightly offset so it's towards the top of the pouch. So again, I say it's really quick and simple, so let's get on with it and show you how you make it. Firstly, I cut out four circles of fabric, two of my outer fabric, which is my apples and pears, and two of my lining fabric, which is the check. My circles measure about eight inches across, and I just use an embroidery hoop as, uh, as a template for those. So I'm keeping two circles intact for the back of my little bag, and for the front of my bag, I've cut the two circles in half straight down the centre, and that's where my zip's going to go. I've also got a piece of ribbon which measures about 14 inches long and that's just long enough to go around my wrist. And there's my zip. I like my zips to be a little bit longer so I can move the slider out of the way as I'm sewing them in. I just find that easier. So this is the first thing to do. So I'll put my zip face down over the, uh, the semicircle. Um, pin and tack or base that in place if you feel more confident. But I'm simply going to line up the two edges of the zip tape and my semicircle and sew that in place. So I'll just put my zipper foot onto my machine and we'll get sewing. I'm using about um, a quarter of an inch uh, seam allowance with, with anything that I do, to be honest. Um, for the zip section, I find I can just push my zipper foot up against the coil of the zip and that seems to be around about the, the right distance. Okay. The lining section goes on the opposite side of the same piece, so the zip is sandwiched in between the two. making sure those edge pieces meet up. Now sometimes your fabric might migrate a little bit or one part will stretch more than the other um, but that's not really a problem because you can cut your fabric down to size as you're constructing. Because it doesn't matter if, you, if this little bag shrinks by you know, a quarter of an inch or so, it'll still be useful. So that's what we've got on the one side, then we're going to do exactly the same on the opposite side of the bag. So right sides together again like so, flip that over, try and line up the two edge pieces here so they match, and then do the same again. going to be the outside of my bag and this section is the lining so again make sure that you trap that zip in between the two pieces the two semicircles of fabric regular foot back on my machine again and I'm going to top stitch either side of that zip and that's going to give me a nice neat finish to the, the front of my bag but it also helps the lining and the outside fabric stay in place. Um, if the iron's on at the moment then you could take that away and give it a quick press first of all. But again I'm going to sew quite close to the hem and in fact I'll move my needle over a little bit so I can get closer to the edge handy feature to have on your machine and then keep that as straight as I can I'm stretching out both pieces of fabric away from the zip so I don't get any puckering in there and I think it's nice to use a contrast thread as well so it stands out if you're not so confident then use the same colour thread on one side 
stretch that out. And just the same down the other. I just need to re-thread my needle. Because my thread started to fray a little bit and it won't go through the needle. Aren't we glad that modern machines have needle threaders? It makes this so much quicker. they're flat. Get my threads away. And that's that. So you can see how that's now kept nice and flat. Right, next thing I'm going to do is to snip away my excess zip. Always use a nylon zip if you plan to cut it. You won't do it as easily with a metal zip. And then I'm just going to take a needle and thread and sew over the ends of the zip together so that part of the zip stays in place when I construct my bag. Like so. Then I'm going to take my piece of ribbon. I'm going to sew it onto the opposite end of the zip that opens. Oh, need to snip away that end of the zip as well. Fold the ribbon in half and loop it over, facing inwards down the zip. And I'm just going to put a few stitches across the end to keep that in place. Right, now to construct the bag. Right sides together, making sure my, my loop of ribbon is out of the way. Pop the back section over the top of the front, turn it over, and then pop, oops, trim that back, the linings right sides together as well. And I'm going to sew all the way around, apart from a section of around about four inches so I can turn the bag inside out. So some of my fabrics have twisted, but that's not a problem. I'm going to trim that down in just a second. Round we go. Over the zip section. Oh, I'm just going to make sure that my ribbon's tucked out. Yes, it is out of the way. This is the section that I'm going to leave a gap, so I'm just going to reverse backwards a couple of stitches. Move my fabric around and carry on. I've got a lot of fabric um, around the hem that I'm going to trim back and I'm going to use pinking shears. You could use your regular scissors and cut quite close, but I find that pinking shears, because you're cutting a zigzag, cuts, <laughs> it makes it easier to turn it inside out without the fabric puckering and looking too bulky. If you don't have them, then cut as close as you can, maybe an eighth of an inch to the seam. That's the zip, which pinking shears aren't too good at going over, so I'll just snip that with the scissors. I'm not going to go where the hole is, I'll leave that extra bit of fabric there, because it might make it easier to sew up, so I'll do that by hand in just a second. That's the zip again, that's a little bit tough. And then through the hole, find the two right sides and turn the whole thing out through that hole. It's a, a little bit stiff because I like to keep that hole as small as I can so I don't have to do so much hand sewing. And remember I've put the stabiliser or the interfacing onto the fabric. If it creases while you're doing this, it'll iron out no problem when you've finished. There's my loop. 
few loose threads. And just pop all of that out. Now when I open my bag, again I just force out that curve. I don't see any raw seams on the inside. So what I'm going to do now, I'll sew over the outside. I'm going to tuck the lining out of the way because to make this a really nice neat finish, what I'll do when I've sewn the outside is to turn it inside out and sew the lining in the same way. So I'll just use a little red thread. I'm just going to use a ladder stitch because I want my stitches to be as invisible as possible. So I'm tying the knot which will go inside the seam. I don't want to see the knots. Normally I'd use the same colour thread but I thought it might be nicer to see what I'm doing here with the, the contrast colour thread. So you take your needle and go in and out on one side of the seam. Try and keep the stitches as tiny as you can. Then go over to the other side of that open opening and do the same on the other side. Then back to this side and so on for an inch or two and then you can start pulling those stitches together. So try and keep them as small as you can because they'll be even more invisible. And you can see the way that I'm going backwards and forwards creates the look of the rungs of a ladder which is why it's called a ladder stitch. Then you simply pull that closed. So follow the lines where you would do if this were, imagine, you know, this is the, the seam that you're sewing, so you're sewing around the curve. If that was on the machine, you'd be sewing around the curve. And I'm just trying to do exactly the same with the stitches that I'm picking up by hand. This is why I like to leave a small opening as well, so there's less of this type of work to do. That's looking good, we're nearly done. Now, of course, you can make these little bags any size that you like as well. If you made one half of this size, it could be a little coin purse or something to put your dinner money in uh, for the school children. Make them personal. Put some applique onto the back of it. Or you could use two different colours of fabric for the top and the bottom and even for the back of the bag as well. So you can make them really classy in satins or, or silks or really fine fabrics. There we go. Nearly done. Again, I normally spend a little bit more time making my stitches as tiny as I can. And you know, I actually find that really satisfying. Needles just come undone, so just bear with a second. That'll do. So I can pull my threads quite tight now. And then to finish off, I normally just sew over and over on the spot, tiny little stitches three or four times, thread the needle through the loop, and that'll knot the thread. And snip. Now that needs a press. And I need to sew up the hole uh, the opening, sorry, on the inside of my pouch. And then my little circular wristlet is finished. <laughs>